a world non-profit slash NGO job business organization introduction. This is the biggest book on the non-profit and charity sector which includes jobs with governments. It contains thousands of NGO, non-government organization, websites and organizations. I provide lists of non-profit organizations for most countries. A non-profit organization according to U.S. tax rules is called a 501, C, 3, organization. It can cover all of the following organizations. Professional sports league like the National Football League. Most colleges and universities. Private and publicly funded hospitals. Relief organizations, charities. Religious organizations. Political. Membership organizations like the American Bar Association and the National Rifle Association. Activist organizations. I'm cynical about the nonprofit world because of my experiences within it. The needs of the world as in helping poor, hungry, homeless, and unemployed people is urgent and desperate yet when I was involved with nonprofit slash activist groups, there was something unsavory about a lot of the people I worked with. For many of them, it was a leisurely, sociable fun place to hang out while I was trying to be a serious-minded person thinking I was sincerely helping people and changing the world in some positive productive way as the naive liberal idiot I was as a young man. These fields are full of phony liberals pretending to be kind, loving and compassionate towards the human race but they're really there for reasons like a sociable place for friendship, fun, and romance. The soft, cushy, well-paying jobs with no accountability as in the capitalist world where you have to produce profits. Ego and vanity. I come from an era where the activist was seen as a cool guy or gal. There were plenty of people on college campuses protesting the Vietnam War while Negroes, women, and gays had their own beefs with the man meanwhile unions were striking for better conditions and more pay. Abby Hoffman went on the run as a cool heroic Robin Hood-like activist. He later killed himself. Why? Did he tie himself up so much in his activist identity that when that faded he had nothing left? There were lots of protest songs like Bob Dylan's The Times They Are A-Changing and The Bird's Turn, Turn, Turn. The Smothers Brothers got kicked off TV for being too left-wing. JFK, RFK, and Milk got assassinated. Cops killed rioters at Kent State University. The Manson crew killed some people. The Weather Underground, the Sibianese Liberation Army and the Black Panthers used violence to fight for their causes. A bunch of so-called activists were drug addicts looking to get laid. They might have started with good ideas and noble ideals but they degenerated into getting easy money so they could have a good time. That's why this Kumbaya thing, we're all united as humans, it's a small world after all, we're all in this together doesn't work because at heart we're all loners responsible for ourselves. Capitalist society has made it so that most of us want money to the point of greed. We're too egotistical to live in a commune as B.F. Skinner described in his novel Walden 2. I remember the Jesus freaks spun out of the hippies then in the MID 1970s, the idea was to go to the farm for communal living. I was working in my father's meat store at the time. Some people came in, they wanted to put their transcendental meditation posters on the windows. This was followed by the Unification Church, the Hare Krishnas, etc. Society went through an Eastern Guru phase and a parapsychology phase. People look for meaning in life. They get lonely. They want communal living. No matter what, you always end up alone in your head. Make peace with it. Don't give yourself to any idea or demagogue. There are good people in some non-profits like the woman who started her own domestic violence shelter. I could tell she was good because they barely had any money and she looked tired. Gabber Mate, the doctor who tries to help the drug addicts on Skid Row in Vancouver, BC looks worn out. I've seen so many scam artists and phonies in these fields that I know that greed and ego win out in most situations. Psychology was started to offer life advice to help people. Now it's a scam industry. It's supposed to be non-profit. It's capitalist all the way. The American Psychological has 56 subcategories. Too much bullshit to describe this simple thing called human life. 
nobody knows what anyone else is thinking but they pretend they have all this advanced insight into human life. Special education was started to help low-achieving kids get some help now it's a massive capitalist industry where schools get money for every kid that is diagnosed with a learning disability and a big private education industry has started up to service the brainwashed, scared parents who are willing to fork over good money when someone says their kid is learning disabled. If you don't believe me, look this up online. Leon Eisenberg ADHD Fraud Some people seek out admiration for its own sake. I was brought up as a purist in the church. You're supposed to do whatever it is you do that's good and positive for the glory of God and glory of life for yourself as a human being. You don't care about praise, accolades, or criticism from the outside. You have your own inner standard of righteousness. The world is full of people looking for some kind of attention from others. If you can't make it as a pop star or professional athlete but you have some kind of need to stand on a pedestal and be admired by others, non-profit type organizations could fit the bill. I come from the tail end of the hippie era where people were trying to be communal, looking for a sense of community, intimacy, and belonging. I now realize we're all a bunch of individual loners going through life but I used to hang around with all kinds of people fancying ourselves as cool, liberal left-wing intellectuals who were on the vanguard of a better world. I left because whether it's the heart of the human or upbringing in a capitalist world, everything always comes down to ego, a bunch of egos fighting each other in some way to be the big cheese in the group. Some people take it way too far. Some people have a god complex they think they got the next big idea for the progress of humanity. A true narcissist is delusional. They think they're doing important work. When I worked at a recycling depot way before it got popular, on face we acted like cool ecological types but in the back rooms we were thieves and scroungers. We looked through all the stuff people donated to us, kept the good stuff for ourselves and threw most of the stuff we were supposed to be recycling away. The recycling thing was a facade because we were lazy and it's not practical to recycle many things. It was a show. We got funding so we acted like do-gooder granola-eating environmental back-to-nature types but we were dope-smoking young idiots looking for an easy life. With the several non-profit groups I was involved with, there was no sense of urgency and desperation there to help people. A real activist has fire in their soul with an urgent sense of action. Many people in the non-profit sectors are wimps who aren't tough enough for a capitalist job or simply don't want the pressure of having to sell stuff to people who probably don't want what they're selling. NGOs typically attract left-wing, liberal lost lonely people looking for a band of hippie types to hang with. The guys on the CNBC show American Greed typically don't deal with non-profits but occasionally a con artist will come up with some kind of idea to fleece unsuspecting people. They had an episode called Junk in a Box about the guy who started several cancer organizations to make a lot of money. Another guy got a lot of donations acting as the head of a fake veteran organization. Many people cloak themselves in religion looking to get rich. Stuart Copeland has his own private jet parked on the runway in his yard. Why do many NGOs have higher operating fees than the actual money that they spend helping people? Look at what they did with all that money for Haiti after the earthquake. If you ask the locals what they did to help them after all that big talk with a nationwide TV pledge drive on all major networks, they say they got almost nothing. There is another thing about the big non-profits that is hidden from public view. It's who funds them. Several journalists have done reports about who funds the big non-profits with flowcharts showing the big corporations and their foundations funding them but nobody seems to care. Back in the day when Bill Moyers had a show on PBS, he showed some of the biggest non-profits getting funded by big companies and business interests. Greenpeace was funded by big oil companies. They typically show up to stop the Japanese from hunting for whales and stuff like that but you don't see them trying to stop oil all that much. Give the five people at the top of any non-profit organization six-figure incomes and you have bought their cooperation. When you get into this field, be ready for a lot of bureaucracy and hypocrisy. I was brought up in Halifax, Canada right between a massive naval base and the Skid Row part of town. Even at five years old, I knew there was something wrong with society because from my bedroom window, 
I used to watch the Navy helicopters flying around at night during a time of peace while seeing the homeless guys hanging around in front of the Salvation Army for their meal and a bed. We live in massively stupid societies. Greed run the world. Most serious idealists figure out that that greed and ego run human life. You can't change much for the better because the people in general are a mob. That's why they chose to free Barabbas over Jesus in the Bible. Pontius Pilate said I found no fault in this man Jesus. It was a holiday. The custom was to free one prisoner. The mob chose Barabbas because he was a scumbag like them. Jesus was the righteous person, too lofty for the common man. The so-called liberal TV hosts are as selfish as the people at Fox News. They're getting paychecks up near the million-dollar range. The people at CNN, MSNBC and the Young Turks are a bunch of deluded self-centered egomaniacs thinking they're on the side of righteousness. Getting a non-profit job can be as hard, cutthroat and competitive as getting a job anywhere else. A non-profit in the United States and in many other countries is a cover for con artists to make money tax-free. The people in this field might delude themselves into thinking they're morally better than everyone else but many are a bunch of lazy phonies who want a comfortable life. Non-profits attract good, naive lost souls and wolves in sheep's clothing looking to exploit good people. If somebody really wants to help people, they can easily go to Nepal and help poor kids. It's not like some of the non-profits around here where it seems more a social fun thing than helping people. A lot of non-profits take in multi-millions of dollars in donations but only spend a small part of that on their mission statement. They get cushy jobs with no accountability, nice offices, expenses, etc. You can put a car and office on your expense account. I know that Bob Larson, the so-called demonologist, gets his hotel bills paid by his non-profit corporation. Many non-profit managers steal cash donations without declaring them. Some guy who worked at the Benny Hinn Ministry said that at the end of every show, one of the big wigs came into the room where the donations had been collected and took all the big bills $50 and up away. Some people earn up to a million dollars a year in salary managing a non-profit which doesn't include what they steal from the fundraising take or the benefits like the big pension. Many non-profits are fronts for people trying to make money for themselves in the guise of doing something good. Many non-profit types are snobs thinking they're better than everyone else. If you want to get rich fast, study non-profit management in college. Get a master's degree then get jobs with big NGOs with big budgets and start scamming and stealing. If they think you're a good person there for the cause, they'll use you and work you to the bone if they can. I saw a documentary about Hillsong Church. Some of the people said they felt used because this big mega church taking in millions of dollars used all these people as unpaid volunteers to work for them pretending it was for God while the owners lived in luxury. Bob Larson claims to cast out demons. He charges $600 for a half-hour phone consultation. Don't say I didn't warn you when you see a lot of the people you're working with in the non-profit sector turn out to be a bunch of selfish, gluttonous, phony pigs. The only non-profits I trust are the ones in the trenches helping people hands-on all the time. Books about non-profit corporations are at number 025.04, number 361.70, number 362.1-362.8, number 658.15, 658.8, HD 62.6, HF 5415, HG 4027, and HV 41.2 at the library. Legal books about non-profits are at number 346.430 or KF1388 at the library.